Hey guys, so uh, if you're not tuning in live, what I'm doing is I'm just working on some handles. I gotta wear a mask when I do this because some of the wood is uh, sort of an irritant for the lungs. So all I'm doing now is just working on handles. I got the rough shape down. Now I just gotta process some of the, uh, the finer parts so that it's nice and smooth. I'm sorry if I'm not speaking too clearly, but, uh, you know, having the mask off while you're doing this is not really all that good for your lungs. So, all we're doing now is getting ready, getting prepped. I would have gone live in uh, TikTok, but every time I lift the blade into the freaking screen, it cuts me off. It says I'm getting uh, hit for dangerous content. So, I've got a few knives that I'm working on. I've got a, uh, a Nesmuk, a Skinner, Chef's Knife, EDC Variant 1, EDC Custom Order, Hand Forge, and then a uh, Complete Custom. This was uh, drawn up by someone and then sent in for, uh, for a work order. But... Uh, not everything about knife making is like you see on Forged in Fire. A lot of it is just tedious work. Sitting here, sanding, there, it's, there's not a lot of glory in it. There's just uh, tedium. This is the part that eats up all your time as you sit here trying to fine tune all of the handles. There we go. And then of course there's economy. You don't want to use pieces that are too big, so you end up using these itty bitty little pieces. There we go. So what I'm doing now is I started off um, using 120 on the belt sander, and that got the uh, the shapes roughed out. I'm at 220 here. These pieces are all 220, and. Um, if you look close, you can still see that there's a lot of um, rough angles and edges. So you got to take all that off in order for the uh, handle to be nice. And then once we get down from the uh, 220, we'll go to 400. And that's when you start seeing a lot of the detail in the wood that you're going to be looking for once you put stuff through. So... Uh, you situated so you can watch as I get these situated. 
There we go. So, what we're looking at here, huh? This is the red. So, what I'll probably do with this one is I've got some wood. I'll clamp it somewhere. This actually works out better because now I've got a little bit of room. So, I've got a little bit left over here. Open you. Now I don't use um, I don't use paint brushes. I use these little foam things, and I only get a couple of uses out of them. But I like it better that way because this doesn't leave bristles or bubbles. I've got uh, checklists on checklists of things that I have to get done before I can move forward on this because uh the whole measure twice cut once thing you got to make sure that you're not rushing in uh, the lacquer won't stain the blade but it's a pain in the butt to get off so it's just easier to not put it on there in the first place i'm not sanding anymore so i don't need that Okay, so I will, oh, you know what? I will just clamp that in the vise. I'll tape it all the way up and clamp it in the vise. And then I don't have to worry about where you're going to go. I'll just get you clamped in the vise. All right, guys. So here's what we've been waiting for. All right. So is this a good, good area here? All right. The, um, this part of the process is always really, really exciting for me because I love seeing the grain of the wood come alive under the urethane. So that is going to bring all of that grain to life. So all of that time spent hand sanding getting rid of all of those itty bitty scratches and imperfections that's what it leads to so we get this nice and evenly coated And then we can do a back and forth. Here's option A, option B, A, B. So that's how it, that's how it brings that to life. And this is even more finely detailed. Let's see if I can back it in here. So there's that. All right, so you gotta make sure you get all of the wood around here. Make sure you get everything up around the head. Everything's nice and thickly coated. Make sure there's no bubbles. And here she is. Sorry, you gotta look at my mug too, but I gotta make sure you're getting a good view of her. So there's one. I'm really curious about this cedar. I've done red cedar before, but it wasn't this quality, this quality of grain. So I'm really curious about how this grain is gonna show And I'm going to do a 50-50 for you. Nice. It's almost like a salmon. So it's like a salmon pink.
And that'll continue to deepen for a minute or two while it soaks in. And then the other side, of course, that knot ought to be something special. There we are. Knots and burls, knots and burls. I always love those knots and burls. All right, so there's that. Pretty, but nothing mind-blowing, but a nice salmon color. Coming together slowly. Stick that back on. All right. Leopard wood. This is going to be a treat for you guys. Let me move this over. All right. Leopard wood. <clears throat> this is going to show some nice patterning and depth. See that? So, it's got a few bubbles in it. Those will pop as we go. But that nice depth to it, that sheen. That's why I love leopard wood. It's got a nice deep shine to it. Now, I tried to do this on a TikTok, but I got a dangerous activity warning while I was doing the handles. I wasn't even sanding. I was just doing the handle part. And then got a dangerous activity warning. So I'm like, fine. I will save this for my YouTube audience. And they can get the ASMR here. So there's that. Brush you in. Liquid gold. Now you got that commercial stuck in my head. The, the one with the blacksmith in the apron trying to sell macaroni and cheese. Liquid gold. There we go. And there is leopard wood. And this is a uh, semi-gloss, so while it looks really wet right now, it's going to dry to a um, almost satin finish, which is going to allow people to use it, and minor scratches and blemishes won't show up so much. So here's the coat, and uh, this is not very highly figured coat, but you'll see in a moment here why I like it so much because even when it's not highly figured it is very highly contrasted so the the figures in the wood they're always thrown into sharp relief against each other so when you get stuff like this up here near the tip it really contrasts well so it's a very busy wood eye-catching so when you're walking around with this popping out of a sheath people are always saying well, what kind of a knife is that there we go I really need to get more Bacot in here but I'm dying to work with the Wenge because the wenge looks almost like the coat, but it's a much, much, much harder wood. So I'm wondering how it's going to do with my tools and everything. But it's a beautiful wood that I can't wait to work with. But no one's ordered any yet, so it's probably going to end up on an Etsy knife. So here's that. That's one of them. Let me do my eyeball thing here, make sure I'm not missing anything. <clears throat> all right 
now for this next one. So this one I think is actually going to be more interesting because the uh, the grain patterns are a bit busier. So I'll do a 50-50 on this one as well. You ought to see much more contrast in the grain patterning. There. Oh yeah. So Bacot, when quarter sawn, gives you a nice busy grain and even when it's knotty and highly figured, it doesn't tear out on your equipment because it's so thick with resin that um, the wood remains workable for decades after you uh, cut it. So, there we are. And then again, I'll do a 50-50 for you. Just get that ASMR. That nice figuring in there. <laughs> this is also why I prefer working with um, highly figured woods and clear urethane. I like the wood to really be the star of the handle. I don't want it to be fancy pins or, um, or paints or colors. I want it all to be focused on the wood. So there's that. Then I'm going to eyeball it, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then we're going to do the one I've been really curious about. I've been saving this one. You remember it? The curly crotch walnut. So you can see those uh, bands, that stripe, almost like tiger's eye. If I did this right, when I throw the urethane on, we should get a nice deep look to it like a liquid so here we go Ooh. I'm all excited what do you guys make of that we in focus That looks nice and deep. That is good. I like that shop. I might have to go back there. Their prices were really reasonable. There. Look at that. Yes, Mike and Bean, crotch, crotch walnut. So there's that nice deep look as compared to the other side. So I don't know if you all can see that, that shimmery deep look compared to this. But we're about to do the 50-50 thing over here as well, just in case you missed it. We'll get in over here. There we are. Ooh, that one's got even more depth. So that one's even busier. I was thinking about taking this one down to 600 grit, but um, I decided to chance it at uh, 400 and see how it looks. And I think 400 is okay. I don't think I need to take it much higher than 400 grit. Because <clears throat> I'm, I'm getting good depth out of this. And there's that. This one is actually not an order. This one's going to be getting thrown up on Etsy. But I'm excited about this one. This is a very nice looking wood. 
All right, guys. So here's what we got over here. I don't know if uh, it shows up really well. Probably better from the light side, huh? And then we got old boy chilling over here. So this one's had a chance to really marinate. The colors have come through pretty nice, but it's a little dim in here at this time of night. But that is everything I came out here to do. Thank you guys for hanging with me. I'm going to go on ahead and end the live, clean up, and head inside. It's 6 o'clock. I, uh, I might actually get to put my feet up.